this lab serves as a place where all of the classes can come together and it's not just science, technology, and math. Caleb here, early morning in New York City. I'm walking up Lexington Avenue to see the maker man, James Deck at the Marymount School, where he's got a fab lab that's helping close the gender gap for girls in STEM skills. I haven't done a video yet on what a, what a maker lab is. Sewing machines, 3D printers, Milling machines, laser cutter, vinyl cutter, soldering irons, 3D scanners, a lot of physical computing equipment. This lab serves as a place where all of the classes can come together, and it's not just science, technology, and math. And we've got language language classes that come in here, and uh, humanities classes. All right, James, Deck, how are you? I'm good. I got you before coffee. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, for someone who doesn't know what uh, we're in right now, a fab lab. Mm -hmm. uh, could you just give us like three examples of student projects and maybe three main skills you see them learning? I, I love this project because um, this is one that was totally student driven as well. I had a, uh, a, a girl named Lily at the time, she was in eighth grade, this is last year, and she came to me and said she wanted to build a robot. And uh, I said, well, what, what kind of robot do you want to build? And she showed me this video of this robot on Instructables. It was really cool. It was basically like a, a Segway, a, a DIY Segway, and you could hit, it was on two wheels, and you would knock into it, and it would get right back up, and really cool. But definitely, it would have been a, a difficult first uh, ro robot. So I, 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 you know, I, I told her that's great and you can build that, but I think first you should try with something a little bit simpler because um, just the programming involved, you know, using accelerometers and stuff, it, it's not um, really basic stuff. So um, I encourage her to make this thing called the Serb Bot, and you can find the plans for this on, on Instructables. And she laser cut all the pieces, she put it together. We had, did recently have to cannibalize it for one of the... Um, 360 degree servos. These are mm -hmm. special servos that can go all the way around. Um, so we needed to take one off, but I just got her a new one so we can put it back on. And when she as she was building this, she asked me, um, well, Mr. Deck, what does this robot do? And I said, well, it does whatever you program it to do. So then she went into Arduino and started teaching herself how to you know, write her own Arduino functions that would make this thing go forward or backwards. And then I challenged her to try and drive this thing from you know, this room to the elevator, and um, so she's had a lot of fun working on this project for over a year, and um, now and the next thing she saw is that she can control it with a Wii controller, so that's going to be the next step with this. I'm collaborating with a eighth grade science teacher um, on, he's doing some project-based stuff for their um, for their physical sciences class. So one, one of their first projects that they had to build was a solar cooker and all the students broke off into teams of three and um, they had to design and make their own solar cookers and they had the option of using the lab. They didn't have to but um, so a lot of students sort of you know, threw tinfoil around an umbrella or something. But I have one group here, if you can turn around here, this is uh, one, group, one group made this solar cooker which is um, they designed and built in the fab lab, they had to uh, do uh, 3D design their own um, uh, connectors for these uh, dowels. They figured out how to make this sort of adjustable and they laser etched this piece of cardboard under this tin foil to make it easily bendable. Um, and this was actually the winning design. This was the design that, that raised the temperature of 400 milliliters of water in this, uh, in this can they were able to raise it the most. I think all too often when we're taught math, it's completely decontextualized and it's not clear why you're learning this stuff. But you know, in this case, they're practicing math and, and actually utilizing math concepts um, just to make this project. And I, I should say that the three students, um, these are not the most academic students. Um, they, they, uh, they're, they're great kids, but um, not necessarily the, the strongest um, academic students, but when it came to this project-based thing, they really worked together really well. So I have right now a group of students that um, they wanted to create a device. They actually wanted to hack into our existing proximity card reader and make it give out compliments when they check in. Um, 
and so they did a bunch of research and realized that they couldn't actually hack into our existing proximity card reader for many reasons, including security and privacy concerns. Um, but so what I told them was that they could make their own. Um, so they've spent all semester learning Arduino to do this. And um, they're, what, they've are they got just a few weeks left and they'll have this thing called the flatter box, which is a little, their own little proximity card reader that when they swipe into the building, it'll dish out compliments. And you know, uh, this project was their idea and is um, driven by their passions. And instead of me, you know, saying, here, you should learn Arduino, it's, Hey, we've got to learn Arduino in order to make this project happen. So you know, it's 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 uh, really student driven. So yeah, we're talking a lot of STEM skills here, obviously. Oh, yeah. yeah, but you know, also a lot of art skills. So this was uh, a project that my advisees built for Maker Fair. Um, they had done. Uh, they spent all of sixth grade building these dresses out of recycled materials, and they're really cool dresses. But we didn't have anything to display them on, so. Um, I challenged them to make uh, a mannequin, and this is what they made using um, 123D Make. They sliced all these layers, spent about four hours laser cutting, and then several days stacking the slices together and gluing them carefully. But you had an idea that parents could ask their kids what they made today instead of what they learned today, and I think it seems like it's not so much the finished product here, but the act of making. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Even if you cannibalize something right after you make it, mm -hmm. then it's fine because you're just learning how to iterate. Yeah, you're learning how to iterate. I mean, you're, you're, it's really, it's, it's not about learning how to even how to use these tools or software or anything like that because, you know, in 20 years, I, it's unlikely that the, the tools, I mean, the tools have changed so much in just the last two years. I, I you know, I, can't imagine what people will be using in, in 10 to 20 years to do digital fabrication. Um, so it's not about that. It's about teaching them how to learn. I think it's really important um, for kids to, to, to learn how to learn on their own rather than you know, being told what they need to know. And I think to get them off the screen a little. Isn't... Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, so that's, I mean, I could, I, I, I have tried to, you know, do classes where everybody's learning processing or everybody's learning scratch and um, what I found is one you know kids really just they sort of get sucked into the screen it's it's it can be difficult to keep them the temptation of you know browsing the web or playing video games away so uh, I think as much as possible get them off the screens and get them um, working on projects that they're personally pa passionate about